Welcome back everyone to a brand new skill cap video and today we'll be ranking every single role from hardest to easiest in season 12. Instead of making a generic list, we're going to spice it up and cover two lists. One based on the mechanical skill or micro difficulty of each role and one based on decision making or macro difficulty of each role. Simply making one list is extremely opinion based so we felt by separating into micro and macro difficulty we're able to reach a better consensus. But before we get into it, be sure to check out skill cap if you want to truly get better at League of Legends. Legends. We're the only service that offers a money back guarantee if you don't climb at least five divisions while actively using our service. We do this because our service really does work, and if it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't pay. Learn more at the end of this video or click the link in the description below. Let's start off by ranking each role based on the mechanical or micro skill required to play them. The most difficult role mechanically is going to be AD carry. Now, of course, you can twist things and argue that if you're playing a mage bot, then it's not very difficult. But for the sake of the video, we're basing this off playing a traditional ADC in the role. ADC has a higher mechanical learning curve than most roles because many champions are 100% reliant on positioning well and dealing damage from auto attacks to be relevant. Majority of new players really struggle with spacing and positioning, and because ADCs are very squishy champions, it's an extremely punishable role if you're not mechanically sound. Farming can also be much more difficult as an ADC than a solo laner due to you needing to focus on what two champions are doing instead of one. Choosing the second most mechanically difficult role was a little harder, but we ended up landing on mid lane. The majority of champions played mid lane are quite vulnerable, like you see down in bot lane, which makes proper positioning just as important as if you were playing ADC. Mid lane also has the most amount of champions for any role that are skill shot reliant. Unlike ADC though, most mid lane champions have ways to be useful besides auto attacking, whether it be from high burst damage or strong crowd control, which makes them a little bit easier to find success with right away. Even if you terribly misposition in a team fight as someone like Orianna, as long as you can get your ult off before you die or pop Zanyas as you get engaged on, you can contribute something. ADCs can't build Zanyas and generally don't have high impact CC spells they can use before they die, so mistakes are way more punishable. This is a big reason why we have ADC rated above mid lane. Trailing right in behind mid lane is top and there's definitely an argument to be had for the roles to be interchanged on the list. Main reason we have top rated a little bit easier than mid lane though is due to the fact you can play much more forgiving champions in top than mid. Sure, you can play Annie mid, point and click everything and be useful, but you're still super vulnerable and can be exploited for bad positioning. With top lane, you have the option to play champions like Malphite, Garen, Shogath, or Tom Kench, who are all extremely easy to pick up and don't require anywhere near the mechanics that most mid laners do. Once you reach team fights, just sitting there and soaking a ton of damage can be super useful. You could miss all your spells, but because you're providing your team a front line, sometimes that's all it takes. Positioning properly in lane and using correct trading patterns is still very important to succeed from top lane though, which is why it lands right in the middle of our list. It's not the most difficult mechanical role, but it's not a walk in the park either. As we reach the bottom half of the list, these two roles are definitely the least mechanically intensive. You already know what they are, but in regards to which is more difficult, we have support over jungle. Trading and positioning in lane is still very important as a support champion, and you're definitely going to be punished if not up to par. With that said, support doesn't need to focus on external factors like farming, so it makes positioning correctly and hitting spells much easier since it's the sole thing you're focused on. Solo lanes and ADCs have more to pay attention to, which in turn can hinder mechanical prowess. There's also a wide array of supports who can just sit back, heal, or shield their carries, and that's all they need to do. No worries about getting up close to land skill shots, and can just point and click buff up their carries. Of course, there are many supports who do require you to get up close and hit skill shots, but compared to other roles, support has the most amount of champions where you can chill on the back line with decent positioning and succeed. Alright, so why do we have jungle rated as the easiest role mechanically? It's simple really and mainly comes down to the fact junglers play PvE while laners have to precisely hit minions while being focused on their lane opponent at the same time. Positioning does matter to a certain degree when clearing your jungle, but it's not going to make or break you as much as it will for a laner. Especially for melee junglers who have strong AoE clears, kiting camps around is not something you even need to focus on. By no means are we saying jungle is the easiest role overall, as you'll see by where it's rated in our macro difficulty list. Solely based on micro though, you can be an absolute noob and win from jungle, just based off good decision making. There are a wide array of jungle champions who are very durable with point and click spells, so it's not all that difficult to team fight optimally compared to other roles. So what do you guys think of our difficulty list based on mechanics? Do you agree or would you swap some around? Let us know in the comments below and let's jump over to ranking every role from hardest to easiest based on macro difficulty.
Even though we have jungle as the easiest role mechanically, the decision making required to play the role is extremely high and we have it ranked as the most difficult role macro wise. If you're someone who lacks quick fingers but loves weighing out which decision is best based on different circumstances, then jungle is for you. You have so many options when playing jungle as you have the ability to be anywhere on the map and your game plan can constantly evolve throughout the game. Having a set game plan before you even enter the rift is super key compared to all other roles. As long as laners look at their own matchup and take a peek at the enemy jungler, they'll be fine, whereas junglers themselves need to look at every single matchup and weigh out which lane is best to play around. There's so many questions you constantly need to be asking yourself when playing jungle. Should I full clear or go 3 camp into a gank? Should I do dragon or base for tempo? Should I lane gank or go through river? Constantly watching the minimap is also way more important to do on a regular basis as a jungler than a laner. The second most difficult role from a macro standpoint is mid lane. Mid is one of the higher impact roles because it's in the center of the map which allows you to influence all lanes. This means correct base timers and keeping up tempo is so important for mid compared to other roles as giving the enemy a free roam timer can make or break a game. It's much harder to roam as a top laner or ADC so if your macro isn't on point the enemy can't punish you as hard. Playing around your jungler and being cognizant of what they're doing is also very key as a mid laner. As a bot laner, if you see your jungler topside, then you can deduce it's likely the enemy jungler is bot and just play safe. As a mid laner, it doesn't matter which side of the map your jungler is on. You're always able to back them up or rotate to plays, so keeping track of the map is way more vital for mid. This can be a really good thing though because it allows you so much agency over each game and it's why mid is considered one of the best if not the best role for solo queue. The two roles that require the most amount of decision making being jungle and mid are the two most impactful roles for solo queue because any wrong decision can not only impact yourself but the rest of your team as well. Taking a bad trade and being forced under tower isn't as bad as a top laner since the enemy can't roam to two different lanes. Vice versa, one poor trade in mid lane can much more easily snowball into multiple kills for the enemy team. Top lane once again slots right into the middle of our list and it's one that you could argue should be higher based on the elo. For the higher ranks when freezing and wave states become more of an every game battle, Decision making can be extremely important as a top lane. Your 1v1 matchup can be completely lost just by pushing the wave a little too fast, giving the enemy a freeze under their tower. Even though your game may be completely lost after a bad decision, it's less likely the rest of the map falls off a cliff due to your mistake. We feel mid lane is a little more difficult macro wise because your decisions more heavily impact how the rest of the map plays. If you pick something like Malphite top, get shoved in all game, solo killed multiple times, and make the worst decisions possible throughout the early game, you can easily make up for that with one good ult in a team fight. Many mid laners can still be impactful themselves when behind, but unlike top lane, if your lane opponent is fed, there's a high chance they've spread that lead to other lanes, making a comeback way more difficult. Overall, we feel that you can succeed a little bit more from top lane with lesser game knowledge than mid, which is why we have it one slot below. Support comes in at the number 4 spot in regards to macro difficulty. The thing about support that is completely different from all other roles is that you don't have to focus on farming at all. This is a major weight off your shoulders and allows for support players to much more easily focus on things like trading or watching the minimap. There's overall less things you need to keep track of on support compared to the roles we have ranked above it. Proper vision control and roaming is something that can definitely take your carry potential to another level, but it's not vital in your success. We like to think of it this way, support is a role where you can know the least about the game and still find success. However, the ceiling and potential when you learn things like roam timers, vision control, and wave states can make the role super broken. Easy to pick up, but difficult to master is another way to put it. So from the most difficult role mechanically to the easiest role macro wise, it's ADC. ADC is the one role you can have absolutely god awful macro, but if your mechanics are on another level you can still climb. If you're someone who enjoys outplaying their opponent, making flashy plays, but doesn't want to think beyond that, then ADC is probably the role you should look into. Since ADCs have the ability to deal the most consistent damage, as long as you can kite around and survive fights then it really doesn't matter if your rotations are poor or if you're on the wrong side of the map when a team fight breaks out. As a jungler post 30 minutes, if you're bot lane when Baron is up, the game is probably just lost off that one macro mistake. However, the same can't be said about ADC all the time. You can be bot lane alone as ADC, the enemy tries to take Baron, and your jungler hits a smite steal. Your team then spam pings you to group. You get a penta kill in the next team fight and win solely based off mechanics. Overall, learning good macro as ADC is definitely worthwhile and will make you a much better player, but it's not as vital as the other four roles. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about skill cap. So we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. 
Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you are serious about improving. So, there's each role ranked from hardest to easiest based on micro and macro. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below, and if there's anything you disagree with or would change, be sure to tell us your reasoning behind it. Thank you guys so much for watching, good luck in solo queue, and we'll catch you in the next one.